dear community, today is uh, August the 12th in the year 2024. Today is our second full day together in our retreat, uh, our wake up retreat. Peace begins here. It is really a joy to see how full this hall is. Uh, the Wake Up movement, uh, the Wake Up uh, initiative began in 2008. And uh, it was our teachers' um, awareness that spirituality is a very important foundation for all of us to have in our life. And what was happening uh, at that time was spirituality or all of our mindfulness retreats, all, all of the retreatings were of the age of uncles and aunties <laughs> and some grandparents. And we need the elders as, uh, as refuge and those who have a lot of experience. But also our teacher realized that the youth are also the present and the future. And he wanted to, for the community, for the young monastics and the young practitioners to see that spirituality is not something you do when you retire, but it's very important that we start today, we start now. Because this idea of spirituality is something that uh, we do much later in life, when we are uh, successful and we have everything aligned, then we can release our burden and then start to take care of developing our compassion, our love, and so on. But that was such a misunderstanding. And I can share with you the first wake-up retreat. We had 20 people. It was first in Middle Hamlet, and then it shifted to Shanghai for like 40 people, and then increased 60 people in Upper Hamlet. And you know, sometimes it, it may look like uh, it's not successful. And uh, our teacher, he said, every year, keep doing it. Consistency, building the foundation, and entrusting yourself in all of the potential seeds of the youth will understand and will see the need for coming to invest in our spiritual home. And when I say spiritual home, it doesn't mean this meditation hall. It doesn't mean this plum village. But for us, our spiritual home is in our breath, is in our steps, it's in the way we look at each other and the openness that I, I generate to, to see you, to be with you. So for us, spirituality is very deep and it's, it's always present, it's always there. It's just like the seed of awareness in each and every one of us. We all have the seed of enlightenment in us. And we all have the seed to understand. These, sometimes we call them as our, our big potentials. We have a lot of potentials. But with all of the seeds like of enlightenment and awakening and love and joy, we also have uh, also, maybe we call them negative seeds like uh, our frustration, our anger, our um, habit energy of running. But in our practice, we, we learn that these seeds that we can consider not our greatest qualities, not as enemies though, not as something that is uh, that doesn't have potential to enrich another quality in us. So our practice in our coming home 
is to start to befriend ourself, befriend our experience with our emotions, our, our feelings, and uh, re- being uh, together for a day and a half, I can pick up um, the sense of um, sometimes uh, the, f- the seed of loneliness is very present. Is, um, there's a fear of uh, not being able to connect, not being able to feel a part of. And this, this, uh, this feeling, is uh, the fundamental of it is wanting to be seen, wanting to be a part of, and that is a connection of feeling whole, feeling loved. And in our modern times, we can look for love or acceptance in outer forms. But in our practice, we we turn back that direction of attention from outside, we turn it back inwards. And the way inwards, it may be challenging. It's not mainstream thinking. Mainstream thinking is like we, we get more. We, we get more positions. We get more recognition. We, we achieve more. And this, this mindset has uh, entered into at least my mainstream of way of thinking how I was educated, how I was brought up. Everything can be a competition in order to feel more superior, to feel recognized and to feel maybe whole in my, 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 my being. But I've met a lot that have, have reached those uh, maybe goals in their life and are very um, successful, but there's still a very deep void, and there's still a, a dark hole in them. And a part of this journey for looking for, for appreciation and acceptance outside, first of all, I just want to name it, and I just want to say it's totally normal. It's totally a part of being a human being. It's because when we were in the womb of our mother, there was, there was care, there was attention. It may be the most comfortable time, protected, nourished. We didn't have to breathe. Our mother breathed for us. We didn't have to eat. Our mother ate for us. We didn't have to drink, our mother drank for us. So already when we manifested as just a little seed, we were already taught of what being held was, what being cared for was. So in each and every one of us, the seed of love is also very present. But as we enter into into the unknown, we made our first breath, We had to do it alone. The feeling of disconnection, the feeling of survival, and the longing to be loved, to be cared for. And some of the wise ones, they call this the original fear, the moment of separation, and the original desire the desire to be loved, the desire to be held, the desire to be seen, and to be told that you are not alone. And in our mainstream thinking, we also think that uh, success and uh, stability is uh, something very, very strong, very firm, like emotionless, we become numb because we are only investing in the solutions. 
and we neglect what is happening in our own body, in the collective body, and therefore we also neglect the present moment. We, we lose the capacity to feel our emotions and to feel even the hurt and the misunderstanding. And sometimes we also, we don't have the capacity to also feel the joy and the happiness that we have. We're not able to recognize it because we have been trained to look for the path towards solution, success, safety. And when we take this moment to pause and to be still, this is the first wing of meditation. The first wing of practicing meditation is having the capacity to take a pause, to feel our breath, to feel our body, to come back and to see, ah, this is my breath. Ah, this is my body. Oh, I need to use the toilet. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, wow, where did this tension come from? Have I always been clenching my jaws? Have my fists always been this tight? Ah. So meditation, the first wing of it, is having the capacity to pause, to stop, to feel. And when you're able to feel, then you're able to be alive. Because being, being alive is to feel, is to connect. And it's not connect to the future or to connect to the past, but to connect in this present moment. And please understand when we say the present moment, it doesn't mean we're cutting off the past and we're cutting off the future. Because the present moment is only made by the past and is the ingredient, is the infrastructure for the future. So our way of being in this moment, it embraces the past. It gives us an opportunity to learn from the past, to feel what habit energy I have accumulated, what habit energies I have that makes me, oh, the way I open the door, the way I engage, the way I drink a cup of water. If we just take a pause and we just bring our mindfulness to these very day-to-day -day actions, we can start to see the root of energies that are present in us. And in my own discovery and my own journey of uh, being a human being, I wanted to love, I wanted to be loved, and a big part of my journey of learning to love, the first foundation that I wanted to establish for myself was being solid and stable. And I carried that, uh, um, that element and that uh, goal as, as a very high level. And in one of our practice and in one of our songs, breathing in, breathing out, I am solid as a mountain. Yes, solidity is important, solidity to, to stop and to be present, to feel, but solidity alone is not enough that I've discovered. I also have to have the stillness of the water to reflect. And I also have to have the openness, the space inside of me. And this space inside of me is sometimes my own courage of vulnerability. My own courage of, of, of knowing that I have limits and I have, um, 
I have moments when I'm not enough. And I have moments when I can just embrace that. And I can say, please help me. I need support. I just need you to know that I'm not a mountain today. I'm a waterfall. <laughs> and there's a lot I need to break to come out. <laughs> And in my discovery of accessing vulnerability, it comes back to offer solidity. Because the openness that I can feel and I can be authentic to these feelings, I become much more available and open to other people's feelings. When our teacher passed away, transitioned um, in 2022, I've been practicing for a very long time by then. And we recite, we recite impermanence a lot as monastics. We know everything is of the nature of impermanence. So our loved ones that we, that we hold dear to, one day we have to let go. That's a truth, that's a fact. Because everything is of the nature of impermanence. We are of the nature of impermanence. So I was, I was very um, um, confident and sure that when this moment come, I'll be solid as a mountain. But the reality is when something as an incident as big as someone that you hold so dear to your life, who have supported you, who have trained you, who have um, giving you a spiritual dimension is not here anymore. On, this, on the spiritual side, we feel, okay, I can understand this. And I was tapping into more of the spiritual side, and I was just like, I'm strong, I'm strong. No tears, no crying. Solid as a mountain. Shoulders for others, not for myself. And I became very tense. And then when I tap into the present moment and I just allow myself to feel and the feeling of loss and grief was so powerful. And mindfulness is to be present, to stop and to identify what is there. And then I went back to the historical dimension. I'm like, I'm a human being. I'm feeling lost. I'm feeling deep grief. And the moment that I understood this, and I said to myself, it's okay to feel. It's okay to honor the grief. It's okay to rely on others that are also present so that we can express ourselves. And the moment I was able to let go of my own pride, my own pride in my own practice, and my own pride in my idea of stability. When I was able to open up and feel what was happening in that moment was I was also allowing, I was allowing others to also tap into their grief and their vulnerability. And that is also an offering. That is also a transmission, a leadership. So when we practice meditation, having the ability to come back to, to feel, to honor, it's, it sounds very simple, but our mechanism of avoiding pain, avoiding suffering, avoiding our grief is very strong. We, ha we have very good channels, autopilots that we go to in order to, in order to be away from these particular feelings and emotions. So in this retreat, so far we've been introduced 
have been introduced how to be present. And maybe for some of us that have been coming for many retreats, we may think that, uh, okay, I got that, I got that. But our presence is ever-changing. And our stability can also be more bigger and stronger and embrace more. So when collectively we have the practice of presence, the practice of being here for ourselves, is at the same time giving yourself the ability to connect. A lot of times we're connecting out of FOMO. I do that a lot, so it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> I'm con we're connecting because maybe it's a social um, cue that we feel in order to be, to be rich in friendship, in connection. But maybe that's also a running and an avoidance. So when we stop and we come back to our home here, home in this body, our home in our feelings, our home in ourself, we're inviting ourselves to befriend ourselves again. Your breath is your friend. Your steps are your friends. Your capacity of stopping and embracing yourself is your friend. It's wonderful to have also friends, humans, but also trees, cats, dogs, and so on. But in the spiritual practice, the breath becomes a very intimate friend that we can befriend. And as long as we are alive, this breath accompanies us. So in our practice of stopping presence, we're also befriending again ourselves. So let us listen to a sound of the bell. Let us invite our friend. Let us invite ourselves to be a friend with our breath. Let us be present for the breath. Let us just feel the breath. We don't have to think or force the breath. Just feel the breath, feel the life in the breath. And when we are listening to our breath and we're present with our breath, we're starting to look deeply into the breath, into life, into the present moment. And this is the second wing of meditation, is having the ability to understand, to look deeply. So each and every one of us, we have um, the responsibility as a practitioner, as a lover, as a human being, the responsibility to also generate joy and happiness. So yesterday in the first talk, we've learned about uh, the first four exercises of mindful breathing, aware of breath, that's the the, the capacity that we have to bring mindfulness present, the awareness. And then we want to concentrate and stay with the mindfulness so we become one with the in-breath and the out-breath. We can feel th the deepening of our breath 
and we don't let ourselves, we train ourselves every time our mind wants to go into thinking mode and say, no, no, that's for later. Let us just be with the breath, developing our concentration, maintaining our mindfulness. Then the third is to become aware of the body and then to accept the body, whatever state it is in. When you come home to the body, be mindful of our self-harm in our own thinking. Oh, why are you tense? Why are you stressed? Why aren't you healthy? But when we come home to the body, to be tender to it, to be aware of it, and we start to accept it. And the body is, is also a teacher to us. If we listen to the body, we also start to understand, ah, I've been leaning more towards the left. What does that have to do? What is the thoughts that I'm carrying? What are the stories that I'm carrying? What are the tension that is built up? Where, where is it coming from? So coming home to the body is a meditation in itself. And then the fourth exercise is the practice of releasing the tension, bringing well-being to the body. So we practice, uh, we practice total relaxation as, as an art. Relaxation is an art. And in this retreat, if you're gifting yourself the time to really just release, take refuge in Mother Earth, release all of the tension, all the, the muscles, and you can even invite mommy and daddy to be present, invite our ancestors to be present. I know my mother worked two jobs, had a lot to carry, the responsibility so for her, the idea of relaxation is more just an idea, it's not a reality. But I'm her continuation, and I also carry that energy in me also. So when I learn to relax and when I learn to release, I do it also for my beloved. And this is, this is the truth in our practice of interbeing. Interbeing, being, we think that we, we are alive and we are separated, but the insight of interbeing is we cannot be by ourselves. There's a thread that's always connecting for us to be here. And if we remove all these threads, then our fabric will not here. So just looking deeply at ourself, we can identify Ah, mother, father, when particular habit energies come up, I recognize. I'm not here blaming my parents. I just recognize, ah, you're there. You're here. But in this moment, also, I'm here as an individual. I am your continuation, the non-self element, but I'm also Brother Fapu, and my responsibility is to honor the journey that you've come and what you transmitted to me. But in my capacity now, I also have a, a new way of seeing, a new way of being, a new understanding of happiness, a new understanding of care and love, and I want to transmit this to them in me. We start here first. Don't try to change your parents yet. <laughs> I failed many times. Sometimes, you know, I, I, we practice and we, we have a lot of joy, a lot of, we feel good. I was like, and I, I want to share this to everyone. And that's a very good aspiration. That's a beautiful aspiration. But everything is conditioned. Everything has to be the right time, the right moment. And we have to be very skillful. I remember my first home visit home. I'm coming home as a monk. 
Mommy, when we eat, we're going to eat in silence. <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> and I forgot, I'm also a son. <laughs> I'm not just a monk, but in this household, I'm also a son. And I, I, I was like, okay, S being a monk is great, but being a son is okay too. And I started to let go, and I started to give permission for my mother to be my mother. And I can see her way of love is present, and sometimes it's not exactly what I need, but it's the best that she's doing. It's what she knows, it's what she has been taught, it's what she has, how she has been loved. And before, I always pushed it away. And I always said, like, come on, mom, I don't, I don't need this. Understand me, da 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 da. And I, I go into storytelling mode. And, then, and in the present moment, in that moment with my mother of being present, stopping, stopping to, to, be, to look for a perfect mother, a perfect parent, and seeing all the stories that are coming up in my mind and just, just being present, just accepting and saying, ah, this is her love language, food. <laughs> eat more, Papu. Moderation at the monastery, here, just eat. Because <laughs> that is happiness. And then I learned to let go a little bit. Right, so we have sometimes our practice, yes, we learn to know what is, what is right for us. We have the responsibility to take care of our body. But sometimes the happiness and the joy is more than us also. And we tap into the collective energy, the collective joy and happiness. And I say, ah, oh, mother, she never had enough food. So the fear of not enough is very strong. And if I don't become the person to receive and transform that, then I will transmit this energy also. So in that moment, I had a, one of the, my awakenings. So when we speak about enlightenment in Buddhism, there's many enlightenments. And you've got to have baby enlightenments. And that moment was, Mom, I'm going to be your son, and I'm going to accept your love. And when I was able to have that insight in me, I had so much joy. I had so much joy. And my way of being with my mother became much more flexible. And I had a lot of understanding. And trust me, a lot of buttons were pushed. A lot of buttons were, were pushed, and instead of being annoyed, every time that, 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 that energy arises, that's my bell of mindfulness. Back to belly breathing. Mm. The conditions that my mother have are different. This is her way of being, her way of love. I'm not going to, I'm going to also offer back. I'm also going to be, and I will also learn to share. I say, mother, mother, I appreciate so much your love. But please understand, for me, in this present moment, the kind of love that you can offer me is very different than the love you need. So I'm not rejecting it. I'm just enhancing the understanding. So being able to communicate, so being able to recognize the seed of annoyance and maybe frustration, and then accepting, embracing, and then finding a language, finding a way. Because mother, our loved ones, also want to be seen also want to be heard. 
And I've recognized that a big part of me have been neglecting that. And therefore, and I haven't helped to bridge the understanding. So in our practice of the present moment, this is looking deeply. When you start to see and you start to feel and you, and you start to understand, ah, this is just a language of love, but how can I, how can I deepen it? How can I make it richer? My mother loves sports, w- which I'm very grateful for because I love sports. So, you know, the way we hang out was w- watching the NBA. <laughs> Her schedule was not sitting meditation, but 7.30, Raptors game is on. And a big part of me was like, you know, a part of monastics. We have to be very mindful with our consumption. But in that moment, I, my, my way of being with my mother was more important. And it was crucial for me to also let go of some ideas. And just to be, and just to feel what she is feeling. Her excitement, yeah, mom, rap, let's, let's go. <laughs> talk about trades. I can't believe my mom knows all the players and we talk about trades and everything. But it's just like these these, what I have discovered as a practitioner is these little things of connection, of relating. That's the first gateway in. And my mother works so much, so her shoulder is always very tense. And I found my love language to my mother. Mother, would you like a massage? Oh, yes. NBA. Deep tissue massage. (laughs) Mom, how are you? Mom, I know I live away most of the year. Do I fulfill you as a son? Do I make you feel lonely sometimes? Yes. When you went to become a monastic, sometimes I felt like you abandoned me. I'm sorry, mom, but in this moment, I'm here. I'm here for you. In this moment, tell me, how is your journey coming here? How is your journey coming to Canada? There's so much I want to learn. I want to know more about you. Oh, you know, mother had two jobs, and mother never told you but mother had a miscarriage. Mom, say more. Yes, you were supposed to be an older brother, but in the early days, we didn't have enough, so I worked a lot, and I had a miscarriage. So sometimes I feel like we're missing somebody in the family. Oh, wow. And for myself, in that moment, I recognize a very deep void in me. Because I was supposed to be an older brother. And when that seed that didn't manifest outside but manifested in my mom, already I was an older brother. And there are some things that are deeper than language, the feeling when a new element manifested, I was also, I was upgraded to an older brother. And it, it gave me so much insight in my life that, oh, this is why sometimes I feel like I want to just protect and, uh, and hold my younger siblings because a part of my nature was always to be an older brother, and that was understanding. And in that moment, I said, Mother, but my younger sibling, 
even though it's not manifested outside, it's alive in us. Because it did manifest, and I became an older brother. And even though all the conditions didn't come together for, for that manifestation to be, but I am here. And sometimes my loneliness and my feeling of emptiness, my feeling of void, it also comes from this loss, this grief. And sometimes when the loneliness arises in me, I can embrace it and I practice coming home to here. I befriend myself. I see that inside of me, my younger sibling is here. I know my ancestors are here, my spiritual ancestor, my community. And you can tap into the collective in your own self. And this is a very important element that we would like to share for each and every one of us to invest in this foundation of presence, this understanding of connection. Maybe we feel alone as a physical, but when we tap into the spiritual foundation, we're not alone. We've had many great friends come along to support us. Maybe our parent weren't the condition that taught us love. We may have great uncles, aunts, or friends, or teachers, or mentors that taught us that, how to love, how to be, how to understand. And if we feel that emptiness of space, that emptiness of feeling whole, we start to rebuild it in, in our own spiritual body here. We have a physical body, but we also have a spiritual body. And every time you're able to, to stop and to come home to, you're tending to your spiritual body, your spiritual home. And your spiritual home can be a refuge for yourself but it can also be a refuge for so many. And many here, not just the outside physical humans, but many also from our past, our ancestors, even our society. So coming back to our responsibility of being able to generate uh, joy and happiness, it is important because whenever, maybe when we hear the word joy or, or happiness, we may have a reaction. Because our happiness may be an idea that is very far away. But our practice of coming back to the present moment is to recognize that the joy and happiness is actually very present. We have to have the creativity, the artist within us. We're all an artist. We're an artist of this present moment. Are we able to highlight what is bringing us joy right now? It may be very small, but we, may, we have to have the responsibility and the commitment to recognize I have two eyes that are still in good conditions. I can see my beloved. I can see my community. I can see the blue sky. That is a condition of joy. So let us help ourselves, help us as a community, help us as a society to redefining joy and happiness. And for us, joy and happiness is not somewhere in the future to, to run after, to chase after. But the joy and the happiness is in the present moment. Even the happiness of recognizing 
I have suffering. You can be pleasantly joyful of knowing that, ah, I got some things that I'm holding, and I'm going to care for you. Don't worry. But I'm also going to take care of my well-being. It's kind of like physiotherapy. You know, when you injure a big muscle, the, the therapist, the doctor, sometimes don't go directly to the pain, but it has to work around it. It helps build a foundation around it. So the healing of the wounded muscle is also being healed while we are strengthening our other ligaments and muscles. So this is also very important in our practice. The skillfulness of a, of a practitioner is being able to have the right balance between suffering and happiness. So sometimes we can lean more. It's maybe because hap- the, the pain and the suffering maybe allows us to feel more. And we can acknowledge that. But don't forget our potential of also feeling the well-being that is also in us, the well-being that is also there. We have to have this ability to, to see and to grasp it. It's like this is happiness. This is peace. This is stillness. And I can be with it because it's not just mine alone. Because if I continue to cultivate it and I can share it, we, we redefine, we rebuild a different kind of culture. This culture of, um, of, running after, of, of running after fame and power is very strong. Even all of us monastics, we, we have to be very mindful of these energies. When we feel successful, we feel pride. How do we generate and how do we how do we shift our pride? So pride is self, and we we have also the the. We have the right to also feel that we're doing something good. But our practice is from the pride. We shift it to gratitude. Thanks to all of the conditions that have come for me to have, this capacity, this skillfulness, this talent. This way of being, it's not just mine alone. It's from coming from so many different sources. And then we learn to we shift our happiness and our pride. And we can also, we call it sharing the merit. We, we share our, our success. We share our joy. And we turn it towards gratitude. And gratitude is a very good nutriment for us. Let us be grateful for this uh, sound of the bell. Let us be grateful for this breath. And then continuing on with the seventh and eighth exercises of mindful breathing, this is when we have uh, generated our foundation of stability, of we have enough joy, enough well-being. Let's tap into a little bit of our suffering. Aware of a painful feelings, ah, I breathe in. It's very non-violent when we're aware of it, and instead of seeing it as, as something not healthy, we just, ah, you are here. I know you. 
I want to invite you this feeling. Maybe it is a complex of inferiority. This is something I practice a lot with. You know, before coming up here, I was out there breathing with my inferiority complex. I was like, am I good enough? Can I share to all these wonderful human beings? And then the story goes on and on and on. And when you're aware of this, and I, 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 I saw I was going down this rabbit hole of stories, I said, ah, Fapu, stop. That is just perceptions. That's not even a reality. You're just creating this reality in yourself. So this is what we called in Buddhism, the Buddha has shared of the second and third arrow. So when we, when we receive, when we have a feeling that arises, instead of just seeing that feeling as it is, we add another arrow by our thinking. We said, oh, maybe because they think like that, or they're gonna judge me. And you add more and more and more and you are growing your own suffering from maybe what is not the reality. So our awareness, ah, this is painful feeling. Be with it, embrace it. Name the pain, name it. What is it? This is our homework as meditator. Ah, it's, I'm excited, I'm so happy. Why are you excited? Because I get to be with cool people. It's not bad. I get to be with the bald and brown every day. <laughs> or, ah, my inferiority, where are you coming from? Oh. I was always the smallest in my school, so my nickname in school was Shorty. And that nickname has become an identity and an inferiority already complex. So I always felt small, so I would walk around <laughs> trying to be bigger. And I realized how much of a strain and a leak of energy that was for myself. And I also projected that in the community, in this monastic life. And when I said, oh, you know what? Being small, being short, it ain't that bad. We can crawl through little doors and so on. <laughs> when we're on a sangha trip and we need to squeeze in the car, sh who are the small ones? Come squeeze, I'm here. <laughs> Knowing my, how I contribute to the community, how I contribute my smallness to the community, why not? We're a diverse, we're a diverse organism and every element is important for this organism to function. Where is it? And then where is it in the body? Where are these feelings in my body? And sometimes I, I would use my hand as like a mindfulness and my tenderness and I feel it in my jaw and I would just put my hand there and just to be, I know you're here. My anxiety, I grind my teeth a lot. very practical, and we communicate to ourselves that we are here, and we're not going to push you away, but tend to it, and it's very healing when you're present for it. Naming it, cal and then the eighth one is just calming it, being with it. And it's just like when, you know, when we're angry, before we became angry, there were all also other emotions that were there. Maybe it was being hurt, being misunderstood. So it's just not anger alone. And then there's also love in anger because we want to ha bridge understanding. And maybe when we see something that is, um, that is not right, anger arises. But anger here is like a bell of mindfulness. And it's very connected to also our love and our compassion. 
because we see something that is not right, there's a mind of love that wants to rebuild it, to help it, to relieve that suffering, whether it's in here or around us. So when we come to the feelings, practicing stopping, naming it, where is it in the body, and then embracing it, and then we can learn to also recognize and ask, where is the story here? And what stories am I holding on to? This is a very deep practice of letting go. We have, we've, we've experienced a lot and sometimes we hold that same story toward that same person for 10 years. And we don't give the opportunity to see that person as a new human being. And also the stories we hold for ourselves. Check in when there are strong uh, um, feelings and emotions that we hold on to, because that story itself may be holding the pain there. And, and check in in this present moment. Is there a new story that I can generate? Because you're a new human being. You're, you're, you've grown, you've matured, your understanding has also developed. And some stories are helpful to remind us of the suffering of the past. But the story is not there to hold us down and imprison us. Because as an artist in the present moment, we're all drawing a new past today. And as an artist, we're building something for tomorrow. So how we, how we be in the present and be with the pain, that is a contribution to also the healing of the past and the contribution to what we're building in the future. And when we can let go of the story, we also, we allow ourselves to shift. We allow it, our pain to shift also. Sometimes we can really practice uh, like letting go. A lot, in my, uh, a lot of friends in my Dharma family shared the practice of letting go as an aspiration in this retreat. And there's a letting go in, in the stories, but there's also the letting go of pain. There's letting go of also expectations that we have for ourselves, so that we can be fully present here and just allow yourself to, to be you in this moment. Your parents are in here but they're not around us to tell us what to do, what not to do. But you, as a practitioner, your mindfulness gives you your way of being. That's your right. That's like your, your will, your free will of understanding your breath, understanding your actions, and understanding how holding and caring for is also healing. There's a lot more to share, but uh, my sister tomorrow will continue the Dhamma talk. But uh, today, in the message that I would like to, for us to, uh, to build on is uh, our true home, what is our true home? Is our true home in our breath? Is our true home in our steps? And can our true home keep expanding? And then how to also be mindful to generate our joy and our happiness, to identify it. Don't look for big things. The gems are already around you, inside of you. And the third is giving us permission and courage to feel, 
the pain, emotions, they're a part of us. And when we feel it, we can learn so much from it. So we would like to end uh, with a song um, written by um, Brother Bao Tang, Brother Treasure. It's, um, are you here, brother? Ah, there you are. So, the songs that the monastics write are also from their suffering. So they, you can see that the, we also, we have a lot of mud in us. As monastics, we got a lot of things we're transforming. And um, as, a, as a practitioner, we're also artists. You can channel these into poetry, into uh, music, into dance, into storytelling. So as a practitioner, our teacher says that each and every one of us, we're a meditator, we're an artist, and art here is just not in these forms. Just how we handle the present moment, that's an art. And the third quality, we're a warrior. <laughs> we're a warrior. We have the courage to, to feel, to be, to embrace, to transform. The warrior inside and the warrior outside. So this song, written by Brother Treasure, is called Loneliness. <laughs> yeah, so this is um, an effort to put everything in a few paragraphs. So it's almost like the summary of this talk today also. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think it's better to just be present and enjoy, uh, see what you can take. I think this is also the moment of happiness, just to be together and share some melody, some words, some feeling, as Brother Fahu shared, that this is like a sharing experience. Yeah. Loneliness is the sickness of this time You may feel the pain throughout the day Yet within you lies the whole universe Your eyes are the deep ocean Your heart is the blue sky the world may seem cold, but you have the strength To rise above the sorrow, to have your own path Embrace the solitude, strengthening your heart Like the beautiful lotuses, rise up from the mud in your loneliness, find hope and light Breathe like the gentle wave and feel safe Smile to the beauty of the trees And the freshness of the air Listen to the songs of the birds They are always there 
Looking back at the young me, I wanna speak these words Through the storm of life, flying high with the birds We faced pain and fears, but you kept your light Like a star in the dark, shining oh so bright I know it's tough when the world seems stark But inside you, a spark cannot shine the dark The loneliness you feel is part of the art A canvas for strength and a brave, bold heart It's okay not to be okay, let me confirm Life is a journey and there's much to learn Each struggle we face, each tear we weep Our steps to climb this mountain so sir Young self understand it's alright to fall In the echoes of silence your courage stand tall Embrace every moment both the joy and the strife Cause each is a brushstroke in the art of life in your loneliness find hope and light Breathe like the gentle wave and feel safe smile to the beauty of the trees and the freshness of the air listen to the songs of the birds they are always there in your loneliness find hope and love breathe like a gentle wave I feel safe Smile to the beauty of the trees And the freshness of the air Listen to the songs of the bird They are always there They are always there They are always there They are always there Thank you, brothers. Let us uh, listen to three sound of the bell together to end our session. <laughs>